Okay, now some actual 483 observations. These are fairly common. Not only the FDA uh, makes these type of observations, but I also make them when I do my uh, uh, audits of, uh, of company suppliers and, and other companies. Okay, out of specification laboratory results are ascribed to lab error without adequate investigation. You get an out, out of specification laboratory result, it probably means the product's going to be rejected. Okay, this gets your production people very excited. Statistically speaking, if you perform another test, okay, reevaluate the, the material, you've got a 50-50 chance of whether it's going to be higher or lower, and probably a 50-50 chance, pure random statistics, that you're going to get a passing result. Okay, so immediately there's a big push to retest. Uh, immediately they want to toss out the original data and say that it was a lab error, okay? If it genuinely is a lab error and you have determined this through a, a reasonable investigation, that is a legitimate reason to discard the data. Either it was a sampling error or error within the laboratory, whatever, all right? But simply saying lab error, toss the results, is not adequate, okay? Uh, so you really have to demonstrate it. And if you're getting a lot of laboratory errors, you know, toss out the data, that in itself is a problem. And that's something that you need to take corrective action to prevent the laboratory errors from continuing to occur, probably including additional training for your laboratory personnel. SOPs do not reflect operations. Whenever I'm doing an audit, I take a look at the test procedures that are required by GMP to be in place when the assays, the analyses are being performed. And you flip through those and if you find any handwritten notes in them, a little yellow sticky notes, you know that the SOPs do not reflect what's actually being done. It's the same with your manufacturing uh, procedures. If you're constantly having discrepancies in your manufacturing processes because the instrument settings aren't the same or the mechanical uh, functions that are being performed are not the same. This is indicative that you do not have standard operating procedures that accurately reflect what's being done. This is one of the reasons you want to periodically review these SOPs. Incomplete deviation and failure investigations, the documentation does not support conclusions. It's very easy to dismiss a deviation or a failure uh, through some unsupported justification, okay? So when you have come up with a, your failure investigation and you have come up with a conclusion, you need to have a solid documented uh, conclusion as to why that failure occurred and what's being done to correct it. Lack of reconciliation of materials. This is a very important uh, observation. If you have 10 kilograms of your active ingredient and each production batch you make requires one kilogram of that active ingredient. And you go merrily along and you make 11 production lots from that initial 10 kilogram uh, active ingredient, something is wrong, okay? Something doesn't add up because you have 10 kilograms, you're using a kilogram at a shot, you should only be able to produce uh, 10 uh, lots. So it's very important to perform a reconciliation of materials every time you use material. This is particularly important with labeling. And the GMP regulations actually call out the procedure you are to use for labeling your product. You start by going into the labeling area and inspecting it to ensure that there are no labels, no product, nothing present. You then count your labels, you bring them into the area that where the labeling is going to occur, and you bring in the product that's going to be labeled. You proceed with your labeling. At the end of the labeling procedure, you have a certain number of final product that has been labeled. You have a certain number of labels that are left over. You have some labels that were ruined, messed up as part of the labeling procedure. When you add those three numbers together, it should come out to be the same, same uh, lot. There was a company back in North Carolina that I was uh, doing some work with. We were reviewing a lot of their production records. And they had a rather interesting uh, 
filling procedure where they would f sequentially fill two lots of the same product on the same filling equipment and between the two lots they would basically rinse the equipment out with their with their next batch of product okay how good an idea that was I don't know but they had validated that procedure so I'm going through the records and I come to the first lot and there's this long handwritten note about how the number of vials that went in were you know 10,000 and the number of uh, full vials were I forget 9,500 uh, but that's okay because uh, they checked the lot the batch before that had been filled of a different product and there were no mix up there the next batch was the 500 the same product code same product but it was 500 vials too many and they said that's just a counting error it's not a big deal because the next batch that was produced which was again another totally different product they weren't short any vials but nobody had taken those two product uh, batch histories and compared the two of them together and noticed that 500 missing from one appeared to be in the other batch called that to their attention a great deal of excitement was uh, generated and uh, the two lots were uh, were not released okay uh, five lack of environmental monitoring okay most companies do a fairly decent job in environmental monitoring that's pretty it's pretty mature system uh, most companies pretty much know what they're doing the problem that we have we will do see is with the environmental monitoring where you will have an excursion in a particular area say a sterile fill area where they will identify that there was an excursion they will identify the source of the excursion they will identify what the little critters were and so on but they don't pay any attention to the whatever production was going on at that time in that area and you end up with product that may have been contaminated one of the companies I worked uh, with uh, which ended up under consent decree that was the source the basic source of their problem the product that they sterile uh, protein solution in the marketplace was growing mold okay and it wasn't caught in their sterility testing and they didn't catch it in the environmental monitoring even though there were excursions that occurred during the production of that lot so that's a, uh, something that needs you need to critically uh, take a look at as part of your environmental monitoring uh, inadequate cleaning validations again everybody pretty well knows they have to do a cleaning validation you need to demonstrate that the equipment you're going to use before you perform your manufacturing process is clean that there is no residual from the previous batches that had been uh, produced with that equipment and that there are no residuals from the cleaning solutions of the cleaning products that you're using okay and most folks pretty well get that but where they fall down is that yes your analytical procedures that you're using to evaluate the residual say cleaning uh, products needs to be validated okay but the collecting process that you use probably they take a little cloth swab and they wipe down a, a section of the piece of equipment to use as a sampling for uh, uh, evaluating any uh, residuals you have to validate that sampling procedure you need to validate the extraction procedure you use to extract any residuals from that uh, cleaning swab so there are a number of additional levels of uh, uh, evaluation that need to be performed as part of a cleaning validation 